Hello, my name is Carrie Brown and I'm with the Central Mississippi Regional Library System. Today I'm going to be reading to you chapter 7, 8, and 9 of Calendar Mysteries number 2, February Friend, written by Ron Roy, illustrated by John Stephen Gurney, and published by Random House Children's Books. Chapter 7, Bunny in a Boat the kids hiked on River Road along Indian River. The sun shone brightly on the snow and the water. How far is it to the bait shop? Lucy asked. It's just up the river past the middle school, Bradley said. Soon they saw the bait shop. It was a small wooden building with windows facing the river. Smoke came from a chimney. The black pickup truck sat next to the shop. I hear a noise, Nate said. They all did. Thack, thack, thack. The kids walked around the building to the entrance. A tall man with a beard was chopping wood. His nose was red and his breath was white. Hi, Mr. Pinkowski, Bradley said. The man looked up and smiled. He sat his axe down and wiped his face with a handkerchief. Hi, kids, he smiled at Lucy. Have we met? This is Lucy, Bradley said. She's Dink's cousin from California. Ron put out his hand and they shook. You kids want to buy some bait? he asked. No, but we have a question for you, Bradley said. Do you know anyone with a black and white rabbit? He handed Ron the pictures. Well, he's sitting in one of my boats, all right, Ron said. But I've never seen the bunny before. The kids told Ron about finding the rabbit in the closet at school. They explained that Douglas wouldn't eat and told him what the vet said. Ron pulled on his nose. I wish I could help, he said. Have you tried asking at the pet shop on Main Street? Yes, but they don't know the rabbit either, Lucy said. Wait a second, Ron said. My wife might have rented out the boat. He pulled out a cell phone and punched in some numbers. Honey, it's me at the shop. Do you remember renting one of the boats to a guy with a rabbit? You did? Who was it? Do you remember? The Pinto twins and their friends are here trying to find the rabbit's owner. Ron listened for another minute, then said goodbye. My wife says it was an older man with white hair, he told the kids. He rented the boat last summer. Did your wife write down his name? Bradley asked. He had his fingers crossed. Ron nodded his head. Yep, we always take names when we rent boats, he said. But it's tax time. We sent all our paperwork to our accountant. The slip of paper with his name on it is in a box with hundreds of others. The kids thanked Ron Pinkowski and left. A cold wind blew off the river. A few small snowflakes blew into their face. Bradley felt his stomach sink. They were running out of clues and time. Someone in this town has to know who owns Douglas, he thought. Then he realized there was a person in town who knew everyone. Come on, we're going to Ellie's diner. Bradley yelled into the wind. I don't have any money, Nate said. We're going there to talk to Ellie, Bradley said. She knows everyone, so maybe she knows rabbits too. Cutting across the school grounds, it took them only a few minutes to reach the diner. The inside was warm and smelled like donuts. They sat in a booth by the window and took off their mittens. Hi, kids, Ellie said. She was wiping a shelf where she kept donuts, cookies, and bagels. She placed some cookies on a plate. Here, eat these. They're left over. If you don't want them, I'll feed them to the squirrels. The kids thanked Ellie and each took a cookie. Bradley pulled out the pictures again. This is Douglas. We're looking for his owner, he said. He explained how they had found Douglas at school the morning before. He misses his owner and won't eat, Bradley said. We think the owner is a ma an older man with white hair, said Nate. Ellie studied the picture. I've seen this rabbit, she said. Chapter 8. Ellie to the rescue. You have? Where? Bradley asked. Out front, Ellie told the excited kids. It was around Thanksgiving and it was real warm outside. A boy came by on a bike. Ellie tapped one of the pictures. This rabbit was sitting in the bike's basket. Do you know who the boy was? asked Nate. Ellie shook her head. No, I don't think he was from Greenlawn, she said. He was older than you kids. He might have been visiting someone for the holiday. 
Maybe he was visiting the man with the scar on his finger, Lucy said. It could be his grandfather, Brian suggested. Bradley pulled out the picture that showed Douglas sitting on a lawn near a hedge. And maybe this is that man's lawn, he said. Ellie pointed toward the back of her diner. When the boy left, he rode his bike that way toward the Bird Streets, she said. What's a Bird Street? asked Lucy. Over by Bridge Lane, all the streets are named after birds, Brian explained. The four kids huddled over the picture. There are at least ten Bird Streets, Brian said. They all have lawns and they all have hedges. Bradley put his finger on the picture. Look, there's something on the other side of that hedge, he said. It looks like a building, Lucy said. Guys, I think it's the town hall, Nate said. That must be the flag on top. No, it can't be the town hall, Brian said. There are no houses near it and no hedges. Bradley held the picture closer. It's center church, he said. That isn't a flag on top. It's the church steeple. Bradley looked up, grinning. All we have to do is find which house has a view of the church over the hedge, he said. Almost all of them do, Brad, Brian said. We'll never find the right one. Yes, we will, Bradley said. He slipped the pictures into a pocket. We have to, for Douglas. So what do we do, Nate asked. We should walk down Bridge Lane, Bradley suggested. We'll pass by all the bird streets and we can look over the hedges for the church. The kids thanked Ellie and pulled on their mittens. Outside, the wind was blowing harder. The sky was dark gray. It's starting to snow, Nate said. He stuck his tongue out to catch a flake. Let's hurry, Bradley said. The kids walked past the fitness center and turned left onto Bridge Lane. The first street they came to was Wren Drive. They walked to the end of the short street where tall hedges grew. They looked over the hedges. I can see the church. Bradley said, but it doesn't look like the same view as in the picture. Let's try the next street, suggested Lucy. They hurried back up Wren Drive and then went left to Blue Jay Way. They peered over the hedge behind the last house. This doesn't look right either, Brian said. They could all see the church steeple, but when they compared it to the picture, the views didn't seem the same. They looked over the hedges behind Pheasant Lane, Owl Road, and Thrush Court. One of the hedges was too tall. Another one had a tree growing out of it. The hedge at the end of Thrush Court had a white fence in front of it. None of these are right, Bradley said. How many more of these bird streets are there? Lucy asked. A few more, Bradley said. His nose was red and running. Snowflakes were catching in his eyelashes. Come on, guys, it has to be one of these. The kids hiked to Finch Lane. They came to a small yellow house. Behind the house was a neat hedge. It was covered with snow. Bradley pulled out the picture and held it up. I think we found the street, he said. Chapter 9, The Man with the Scar Now what do we do? Let's knock on some doors, Nate suggested. We can't ask them if they left their rabbit in our closet. Why not? Nate asked. Because whoever did it, doesn't want us to know, Brian said. Just then, they noticed a man wearing a heavy coat and hat walking toward them. He was carrying a stack of flattened cardboard boxes. Hey, guys, that's Mr. Neater, the school janitor, Brian said. Hi, kids. Enjoying your long weekend? Mr. Neater asked. Snowflakes had covered his hat and shoulders. Hi, Mr. Neater, Lucy said. Can we help you carry those? I never refuse help, Mr. Neater said. Here you go. The kids took the empty boxes from Mr. Neater's arms. They followed him to the last house on Finch Lane. A for sale sign stuck out of the snow in front. Bradley looked over the hedge and saw the church steeple. Are you selling your house, Mr. Neater? Bradley asked. He nodded. Yep. Retiring in a couple of weeks, he said. I'll be moving to a smaller place. Mr. Neater climbed up his front steps. Just dump those boxes here on the porch, please, he said. He moved a wicker chair to make room. That was when Bradley noticed the scar shaped like a C on Mr. Neater's pinky. 
Thank you. Be sure to tune in next week for chapters 10, 11, and 12. Goodbye!